Hey everyone, it's Dr. Sarah Mitchell. I'm a sleep consultant at Helping Baby Sleep, and I'm here to help you parent confidently day and night. Because great sleep isn't just about the sleep, it's about your feeds during the day, your naps during the day, and um, all of those things go together to help you get great sleep at night. And today, we're gonna be talking about swaddling, all things swaddling. So let's start with the basics. Why do we swaddle? Well, your child has a primitive reflex called the startle reflex, also known as the moral reflex after the person who discovered it. And this, this reflex is based on our caveman brain. It's designed to protect your baby. If they hear a loud noise or experience a sudden jolt or movement, they will startle themselves. And often this leads to waking them, them up, right? What does this look like? Well, they may hear a loud noise and their back extends, their neck extends, their arms extend, and even their hands tend to ex extend. But what people don't notice is what follows next. This is followed by a recoil back to their body because you don't want to get this startle reflex confused with just lack of general arm control. And you may see when you, you know, un unswaddle them in the morning, their arms go straight up. That's not the startle reflex. That's just arm movements happening. So the true startle reflex, everything goes out and then it quickly comes back in. And it's designed to protect them in our caveman world. It still exists. It tends to start to disappear around three months of age, but you may still see some remnants till roughly six months of age. By that time, it has completely different uh, disappeared. This is one of the reasons why swaddling a newborn is so important. It basically helps prevent them from distracting themselves with their uncontrollable hands and helps to reduce the effect of the startle response. There are many different swaddle types out there. I mean, you could get a, a plain square blanket and swaddle your infant with something like that. It does take a little bit of finesse to get it nice and tight and to hold. And you also want to be cognizant of the type of material that you're using because newborns don't uh, temperature regulate very well. And so you want it to always to be 100% cotton and not too hot. Okay. There are also things like the um, love to dream where their hands are swaddled. It's a very tight little packet and they're up in this position. That can be useful. Personally, I love the miracle blanket. It keeps them in the arms down, kind of a straight jacket positioning. Um, and there's also some that you can put right to their, to their chest. I often don't love those as much because I feel sometimes they can wiggle that hand out and distract themselves in the early months with that hand. But there are uh, a variety of options out there. You kind of have to figure out what works for your little person. Now, I often hear people say they don't like the swaddle. It just doesn't work for me. And that could be true. But statistically speaking, like 95% of our kids benefit from the swaddle. So I want you, if that's you out there, I want you to try again at a different time of day or change one variable. What does that mean? Well, often I hear from parents like, oh, they're, you know, they're not, I'm having trouble getting them to settle. And so I put them in the swaddle and it's not helping. Well, it's likely that anything you try at that time of day wouldn't help. So if you're gonna try a new swaddle, the easiest time to get your kiddo to nap is actually the first nap of the day leading up until about, um, well, usually it's the first nap of the day for, for a long, long time. It's the easiest one to get them down for. So that's the one that you wanna try new things on. So a new swaddle or a new approach, you wanna practice that in the first nap of the day. Should you be swaddling for naps and nighttime sleep? Nighttime sleep, Absolutely, super helpful to get longer stretches of sleep. And yes, I did nap during the day, um, did swaddle during the day as well. And um, I would take her out during her awake time, have a feed if it was feeding time, and I would swaddle her. The swaddle start to became, become one of the cues that it was nap time. We had a nap time routine starting as early as four weeks of age because you can start setting up cues at that age, you're practicing, and you can also work on the whole light, dark entrainment. So there's studies to show that as early as one month of age, that's, you know, four weeks, that exposing them to light and darkness can help regulate their circadian rhythm. So it can help them distinguish between wake times and night times. In the night, when I pick them up, I might change the diaper, unswaddle, change the diaper, feed, swaddle back up. But on times that I didn't need to do a diaper change, I would keep little baby in the swaddle and feed her and gently burp her on my shoulder, not pat, 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 pat. Um, if you're on Instagram, go check out my Instagram grid for my finesse over force um, burping technique so that you don't wake her up and you get those little subtle burps out. But often with nighttime feeds, when they're very calm and relaxed, you often don't hear a burp. Um, and that's okay. So we talked about why we swaddle. We talked about some different swaddle types. Let's talk about when is it time to stop swaddling, right? 
And you want to stop swaddling your infant as soon as they're showing signs of rolling. Because if they can roll in a swaddle, that can leave them in a compromised position, which could be a safety risk. So you got to get them out of there as soon as they can start um, rolling, essentially. There are some great transitional products to help you with that. I do like the Love to Dream that has the zippers on the arms so they can stay in their same kind of swaddle, but their arms start to come out. The only bummer about that is it's pretty cold turkey, right? You can't slowly wean off that swaddle. That's what my preference is. That's why I like the Miracle Blanket because you can swaddle one arm out or any other traditional square blanket where you can swaddle one arm out. And so to wean from the swaddle at bedtime that first night, you might have one arm out. Later on in, the, in a couple days later, you might start with one arm out for naps. A couple days later, you might have both arms out at bedtime. A couple days later, you might have both arms out at nap time and then you're completely out of the swaddle. Sometimes it can launch you into a little bit of sleep teaching because now they've got these hands available to be self-soothing. And that's the second question. The second part of this question is, when should I stop swaddling? When you're going to be doing sleep teaching. Because sleep teaching is all about creating an independent sleeper. It's about taking away the crutches that they use to help them fall asleep, such as rocking, feeding to sleep, um, the pacifier, or even just being held and the helping them become an independent sleeper like you and I are. Because you and I, we can climb into bed, find our favorite position, take a deep breath, relax, turn off our brain and relax into sleep. That's the skill, that's self-soothing. That's the skill that your child needs. And research shows that most kids aren't able to do that until three to four months of age. So in my programs, I don't work with anyone before about four months as far as sleep teaching goes. That's the other time that you want to wean from the swaddle. So rolling is one reason. The other reason would be that you're teaching your baby to sleep and she needs to have her hands accessible to be able to self-soothe essentially. All right, that's it for today. I'm going to be back here teaching you a new topic to help you really feel like you're rocking this parenting game. Thanks for being here.